guys, it's Sarah from All Coin Bus Ladies and it was a special day yesterday for one of the crypto OGs, I would probably say Ethereum Classic is celebrating their two years of existence. We're gonna have a look on what happened two years ago, why did they have to do it, what's the difference between hard and soft fork in this case and we're basically gonna see what else is there for Ethereum Classic. So guys, if anyone from Ethereum Classic is watching it, happy birthday, congrats to you guys and apologies but my dog had a birthday the other day and I had to celebrate that instead and I think everyone can understand the priority here, apologies. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Ethereum Classic is an open source public blockchain based distributed computing platform. The currency emerged after the original Ethereum platform forked into two versions including Ethereum Classic and Ethereum. So Ethereum Classic, which ticker is ETC, was officially released after the DAO hard fork in 2018, which occurred one year after the launch of Ethereum. So like Ethereum, Ethereum Classic provides a decentralized Turing complete virtual machine, the Ethereum virtual machine, as well as smart contract functionality. And today you can buy Ethereum Classic known as Classic Ether on most cryptocurrency exchanges. You can store that cryptocurrency in a wallet just like you would hold Ethereum and other currencies. So ETC uses gas, an internal transaction pricing mechanism to prevent spam on the network and allocate resources proportionally to the incentive offered by the request. So why was Ethereum Classic created in the first place? So prior to the fork, there was one version of Ethereum. It was called Ethereum. Then there was a disagreement on how to handle this situation created by the DAO. So in May 2016, the DAO, a venture capital fund, was built on Ethereum and raised an enormous amount of money. The DAO raised 168 million to invest in smart contract development. Investors recognized the potential smart contracts and believed the DAO, which stands for, actually for those of you who don't know, a decentralized auto autonomous organization was one of the best chances for smart contracts to reach their full potential. That same month, paper was released explaining security vulnerabilities in the DAO. Those security vulnerabilities could allow the money in the DAO to be stolen. And just one month later, in June, a hacker stole 3.6 million Ether, about 50 million at the time, from the DAO. The money was taken from the DAO's account and moved to another account without the owner's consent, which was one of the notable vulnerabilities mentioned in the May 2016 paper. Nevertheless, the hacker's 50 million fund wasn't immediately withdrawn and was still sitting in the child DAO. The hacker couldn't access the funds because the DAO smart contract stated that any invested money was unable to be removed for 28 days. So the DAO had lost nearly one third of its investment. The community and investors talked about how to proceed and there were two approaches basically. So part of the Ethereum community wanted to roll back the blockchain, move the Ether taken to exploit to a new smart contract and allow the Ether to be restored to the owners from whom it had been taken. This would effectively roll back the Ethereum blockchain through a soft fork, which meant that investors could keep their stolen funds. Another part of the Ethereum community believed in the immutability of the blockchain. Rolling back the blockchain was a fundamental violation of the immutability. Members of the Ethereum community rejected the proposed soft fork based on this principle. So there was also the second group. The group that believed in immutability rejected the hard fork and continued to use the unforked version of Ethereum. This unforked version of Ethereum became known as Ethereum Classic, while the hard fork version of Ethereum is known simply as Ethereum today. So here guys you can see the differences between halved and soft fork. So meanwhile the majority of Ethereum users agreed that a soft fork was the best way to proceed. A soft fork is like a backwards compatible software update. Users weren't forced to upgrade. Updated users could still interact with non-updated users. However, a soft fork has a major problem. Implementing a soft fork would have resulted in a DOS attack vector. Typically, Ethereum's network is protected from DOS attack, which essentially involves flooding the network due to the presence of gas as a transaction cost. The moment a soft fork gets implemented, the attacker could flood the network with transactions with no gas cost. That meant a soft fork was not the right solution, which is why we eventually got a hard fork. So now a hard fork which is unlike a soft fork, is not backwards compatible. 
Once the hard fork is used, there's no going back. Anybody who isn't using the upgraded version of the blockchain will not be able to access the new updates or interact with new users on the system. For all intents and purposes, it's like you're using two different currencies. They just happen to be built on the same original blockchain. At the end of the day, all of Ethereum's major players, including the founder himself, Vitalik Buterin, and Gavin Wood moved onto the new chain. However, Ethereum Classic continues to have support, mostly from those who believe in the immutability of blockchain technology above all. One of the Ethereum Classic's biggest supporters is Barry Silbert, the CEO of Grayscale. So unfortunately, there are some problems with Ethereum Classic, and the main one is the fact that it's not backwards compatible with Ethereum hard fork. All of Ethereum's main developers and funding team have moved onto the fourth version of Ethereum. That team continues to develop updates and lead marketing for Ethereum, which leaves Ethereum Classic sort of out of the loop. And one of the best examples of this issue is when Ethereum moved from a proof of work to proof of stake algorithm, something that Ethereum Classic has not done. There's also a subset of the internet that considers Ethereum Classic to be a scam. They claim that Ethereum Classic didn't really have any support after the initial hard fork, but its support was fabricated by supporters of other currencies like Bitcoin Maximalis, for example. So neither Ethereum nor Ethereum Classic are perfect currencies. However, Ethereum has far greater support and a much larger market cap. So speaking of the price, let's have a look how Ethereum Classic is actually doing. So the price of Ethereum Classic has fluctuated over the years, like everything had. At the launch, after the hard fork, the price of Ethereum Classic was between 75 to 3 per token before dropping to a range of 1 to 2 dollars for the early 2017. Right now, Ethereum Classic is 15 on coin market cap, with a market cap of 1.7 billion, whereas Ethereum itself got 47 billion and is number two just behind Bitcoin. Its current price is $16 and is up 4%. We're gonna talk about its availability in a minute following the upcoming news and a possible boom that could happen to Ethereum Classic. So, like I said, Ethereum Classic is still in active development. In October 2016, Ethereum Classic underwent a technical hard fork to adjust the internal pricing for running opcodes on Ethereum's virtual machine, similar to the hard fork Ethereum went through one week earlier. And in early 2017, Ethereum Classic went through another hard fork, which is like a, the difficulty bomb or die hard fork designed to increase the difficulty of mining. This had been added to Ethereum's code in September 2015, and the next major Ethereum Classic update will be a monetary policy change that will change unlimited token emission to a fixed cap monetary policy, similar to Bitcoin's limit of 21 million tokens, giving Ethereum Classic a hard cap of around 210 million. So this all sounds really good, but let's not forget about one great news being that Ethereum Classic is going to be added onto Coinbase and that possibly can be what Ethereum Classic actually needs. So let's not forget about the possible addition of five other tokens that Coinbase has made, but let's focus on the one that Ethereum Classic has been getting a lot of attention recently. And I think this is what this project needs to be actually noticed, not just be the copy of Ethereum, how some people describe it, but actually be appreciated for it, tries to achieve, and the actual difference between Ethereum. I hope you guys understood what's the difference between it. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. Actually, let me know in the comments what you think of Ethereum Classic. What do you guys think of Coinbase adding it before any other token? And before we go, leave a like, guys, if you learned something new. Subscribe to All Coin Bus Ladies. And follow me on Twitter at All Coin Sarah, when you can stay up to date with everything that I get up to and everything else that's going on in the crypto world that I find fascinating. So I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Bye bye.